concept that's sometimes difficult for uh, young students to master is the question of what chord comes after another chord? What are allowable successions of chords? And in fact, some older theory textbooks will present large and somewhat confusing charts. After a four chord, you can put this chord, this chord, or that chord. After a two chord comes this chord, this chord, and this chord. It's difficult to memorize a list like that. So instead, what we've done is to um, teach the students a phrase model. It begins with the pillars of harmony, one, five, one. Uh, and we work for two chapters on one, five, one, uh, so that they learn how these chords move uh, from one to the next. And then we add four, one, four, five, one, but not just one, four, five, one, but tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic. Because it turns out there's more than one kind of dominant. There's more than one kind of predominant. And once they learn that pattern and which chords belong in each of those categories, then automatically they know which chords follow others. This pedagogy is not particularly new. It's based on some function ideas from the 19th century in Rewind, but it's a good way to help students understand the flow of the phrase. After they learn this basic tonic predominant dominant tonic patterning, they can go in and learn elaborations for each one, such as tonic extensions or expansions that Bach often uses, for example, in his chorales. Or they might learn how to do a very fancy dominant area before the final cadence, which might uh, include something like uh, a, a cadential 6-4, or it might include a very uh, much more elaborated chromatic expansion of the dominant before the final tonic comes. Each of these, though, will fit into the basic ordering of chords that they've already learned. So as they're learning these new progressions for the additional types of music, the style periods that they're examining in various chapters, they know where to put the new ideas and what order they go in. And in each case, they're attaching it in a spiral method to something they've already learned. This marches right through chromatic harmony. So by the time they're in their second year of study, they're still basing their studies on the phrase model, and they're learning that an augmented six chord is a kind of predominant, and a Neapolitan six chord is another kind of predominant. They move to five. You'll never forget how to resolve those chords if you remember that they're predominant. In the um, oral skills curriculum, they learn how to part ride these chords, how to sing them, how to play them, how to hear them, and that sometimes only one note is changed to make the different progression, to make the chromatic harmony. That makes it very easy to remember not only where does the chord go, but also its voice leading and how it sounds 